I've yet to meet Malcolm. Oh, well, he's a little baby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, but I mean- It's I, funny. It's so I, cute I, to I, hear you say his I, name I, like he's a person. He is a person. I know, but, but it's, it's so funny. funny like, I, keep going to, I keep going to parties and bus stops and stuff, and I don't see Malcolm coming along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm acting like- I haven't run into him yet. I I've didn't been to see Wall- Malcolm at Phil Rosenthal's. I don't know why he wasn't at the big- <laughs> At the big, at the big uh, pizza, <laughs> pizza oven took off. Pizza Con 22. I think Andy Richter said this once. He said, because he had uh, his daughter Mercy before I had kids. And he said, man, it sure makes your life before look like it was in black and white. He likened it. Oh. I was kind of like, what's it like? And he said, it's like the black and white uh, movie Wizard of Oz. And then she opens the door and it's color. He said, that's how much it, ch- wow. and he said, it sure does make your life before look pretty silly when a human being shows up. So That's really funny. Yeah. That's um, really sweet. It does. Yeah. I, it, that's an interesting, it does, man, I, you know, when you watch a movie with someone who hasn't seen the movie before. Yep. That's what it feels like with Malcolm. Like when I'm out with him, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, the world's great because I'm seeing it sorted through his eyes. Right. And he's looking up like trees and shit. <laughs> Malcolm will lay on his back on a blanket in the backyard and just like kick his arms and legs squealing because he sees the trees in the sky. Right. And I never cared about any of that shit outside stuff. Never cared. <laughs> no, I really didn't. I really didn't. <laughs> not uh, a nature guy. N- n- let let alone nature. I, I, I was not a backyard guy. Uh, uh, in, in I'm an indoorsman, and so <laughs> seeing you are a rugged indoor. <laughs> you know what I love? You're a rugged indoorsman. <laughs> right, right. You're uh, the Nick Offerman of the indoors. <laughs> yeah, who can't do a single thing with his hands? <laughs> Couldn't shuffle a deck of cards, or I could, but if I wouldn't want anyone to watch. <laughs> Not because I'm cheating, but I don't know how to shuffle. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But man, he just uh, and I love. I mean, he's my son, and I love him so much. But also, like, I just <clears throat> I'm fascinated by him, yep. and I love watching him see the world, right? And seeing what like sounds, what sounds, images, lights, volume levels, he make him laugh. And then times where he gives these looks like, Jesus, not like crying, just kind of like, can you not? <laughs> yeah, well, you had that great line. Ah, I'll get like too loud and too high in his ear, like, ha, ah, and he's like, okay. All right, take all it right, easy. easy, dingbat. <laughs> <laughs> Jilly, take care of this guy. Hey, and my, a, son, my and son. And a bigger baby crawls out. <laughs> bigger baby crawls in with a with an appropriate to scale size, size trash, trash can. can. <laughs> give, me that, <laughs> give me that head. And I still am ambitious and I still want to do things, but it's just a, that's still there, but yeah. I'm like, uh, if he's good, I'm good. Yes. And I, I liked that, um, I don't know, almost lessening of the ego or ego deflation of just- Oh, I still have a big ego. <laughs> oh, oh no, uh, trust me. <laughs> so do I, but when my ego's deflated, it's still insane. I'm still I mean, Stalin. I mean, it's sometimes just... I lean down, I go, Malcolm, you know what your last name is? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking famous. <laughs> Is it true that you're constantly handing uh, Malcolm eight by tens of yourself? Oh, yeah. You know what? I would like to. He sort of, one time I walked in the room and just because he's learning his hands, he's just learning he has hands. Uh-huh. And he's just always like, it's like he's a shifty guy lying on the stand. <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm like, you keep gripping one hand and the other hand back and forth. Yeah. These little pudgy ass hands um, that look like quiche. And he's like, uh, but he, he banged them together when I walked in. I was like, ooh, I wonder if I could get him, just train him to do that every time I enter the room. Yeah. To applaud. Hey, I tried with my kids. Um, you know, it was great with- uh, my You had kid. Mike Sweeney warm up your kids. I did. <laughs> Mike Sweeney. <laughs> when my kids, All right, energy, energy. When my kids were born, the minute they came out, I had Mike Sweeney uh, sort of work with, you know, work the crowd yeah. for 10 minutes. And so they knew that I was a big deal. Um I don't know why that just reminded me of when we first started doing the late night show in 93, we knew nothing about what we were doing. We had all these crazy ideas and yeah. all these grand schemes. But in terms of the nuts and bolts of how you run a late night show, we didn't know anything. And we didn't know that you need a warm up guy. Oh, no. So we- Was anyone helping you? Well, here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. So we didn't know that we needed a warm up guy. And then someone said, oh, we need a warm up guy. And we said, well, who does warm up on Letterman? And they said, well, the announcer does it. And mm. for Johnny Carson- the announcer, Ed McMahon, did it. And so we thought, right, the announcer. So we had hired this <laughs> announcer, very nice guy, Joel Goddard, who yeah. had a terrific voice. Yeah, and he'd be I like, it's Joel Conan O'Brien. Yeah. And then we started putting him in sketches. But he was um, 
a straight voiceover <laughs> announcer guy who literally his whole, you know, his career had been stay tuned for more, you know, uh, this brought to you by Chevy trucks, reliable Chevy trucks. That's all he had done. And so we handed him a microphone. Someone handed him a microphone. I was, of course, busy just trying to not wet myself. And so um, we were busy with how can we premiere this show and not get killed and how can we survive? So we just sent him out. And I remembered walking out to befuddled crowds for a while and not kind of understanding what was going on. And then once I was putting my tie on and God love you, Joel, it was great. But, but I heard him doing the warm up, uh -huh. and he was saying, then Conan went off to Harvard, where oh he studied God. the history and literature of America, specializing <laughs> in Flannery O'Connor and Faulkner's work in the Deep South, part of the Southern literary movement. <laughs> he graduated magnum cum laude. And you're like, why don't you? <laughs> Born with every advantage. No, I'm dying. You know, it was the last thing in the world you would want to tell an audience about a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> Conan has- uh, So let's get a lot of energy up. Let's get a lot of energy for a man who's read a lot of books. You're in town for one day. You're in town for one day and you've come to a taping and it was just- <laughs> He joined the <laughs> acapella group. Yeah. The Stemsman, a <laughs> four white male singing group specializing in singing and rounds. Before I bring him out, let me tell you, I've felt Conan's hands and they are lily soft. Never a day's <laughs> honest work. O'Brien claims he's never actually seen anyone do physical labor because his pater, the Latin term for father, told him it should be avoided. Let's bring him out now with a lot of energy, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> That's a true story.